who wrote the book of Proverbs. The author of the book of Proverbs and every book of the Bible is God. Men were moved by the Holy Ghost to speak and to write his words. 2 Peter 1 verse 21 It is the words that are inspired, not the men. The men are merely earthen vessels used of God. Proverbs 1 verse 1 The Proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel. From this simple reading we might conclude that Solomon is the principal writer of all the Proverbs. But after carefully studying the book of Proverbs in its entirety, learning what the book teaches, and by comparing it with other scriptures, we may conclude differently. By cross-referencing scriptures, we find that David, the anointed king of Israel, made mention of the Proverbs were known long before Solomon was born. Proverbs were mentioned in the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy, books written by Moses very early in Israel's history. Several of the Proverbs are also found in the book of Job, which is the oldest book in the Bible and the oldest book in the world. 1 Samuel 24 verse 13 As saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. The book of Kings states that Solomon spoke many proverbs, but this does not confirm that he wrote the book of Proverbs. Solomon was also known for thousands of songs, but only one was included in scripture, the Song of Solomon. 1 Kings 4 verse 32 And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. The book of Ecclesiastes, which is generally thought to be written by King Solomon, claims that the author of Ecclesiastes set in order many proverbs. This indicates that he collected proverbs and ordered them in a book. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 9 And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed, and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. Before his death, King David made many preparations for the construction of the temple from instructions that he received from God. Consider that perhaps God also inspired David to write Proverbs as instructions for his young son Solomon, 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1, to prepare him to reign as king. Here are at least a few verses in the book of Proverbs that might indicate King David as the author of at least some of the Proverbs. Proverbs 1 verse 4 to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. Proverbs 10, 1, The Proverbs of Solomon A wise son mocketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Proverbs 22, 21, That I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. 1 Kings 4, 34, And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. Who is the audience for the book of Proverbs? Using only the of Proverbs as a guide, it becomes clear that the audience is twofold. My son is addressed twenty-three times, ye children are addressed four times. By comparing scripture with scripture, the identity of my son and ye children can be determined. Two very important verses will shed light on my son. Remember that all scripture is inspired by God and it is he that is speaking through his word. Exodus 4 verse 22 And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Hosea 11 colon 1 When Israel was a child, then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. From these verses we understand that my son is the whole nation of Israel, which was first born when God called them out of Egypt. The identity of ye children can be more complicated to determine. It is reasonable to assume these are the physical descendants of the man Jacob, who later became Israel, Genesis 32 verse 28. In fact, the first time we find the phrase, the children of Israel, is in the account of Jacob wrestling with God, when God changed his name. Jacob is the son of Isaac, who is the son of Abraham. These are the fathers of the nation of Israel, to whom God made many promises, a promised seed that would be heir of all things, a promise to make them a great nation, and a promised land for their possession in the Middle East. The physical descendants of Israel were later promised an everlasting kingdom with the son of David sitting on the throne, in the city of Jerusalem forever. 
Abraham was also promised that he would become the father of many nations. Genesis 17 verse 4. Those nations include at least some of the Gentile nations that are not reckoned among the nation of Israel. Numbers 29 colon 99. Psalm 147 verses 19 to 20. Abraham had other children. Ishmael was born to Hagar the Egyptian. And after Sarah died, Abraham married Keturah and has six more sons. 1 Chronicles 1 verse 32. To complicate the matter a bit further, in this present dispensation, the Apostle Paul teaches that those saved by faith in Jesus Christ are now the children of Abraham. Galatians 3 verse 7. However, this doctrine was a mystery never before revealed, until the risen Savior called the Apostle Paul to take this message of faith alone in Christ alone to the Gentiles more than a thousand years, after the book of Proverbs was written. Context determines the identity of ye children. In the book of Proverbs, which is written during the time of King David and King Solomon, the identity of ye children can safely be assumed to be the physical children of Israel. Understanding the Times Whether written by King David or King Solomon, both of these kings give us a date of approximately 1000 BC. When King Solomon was very young, he asked God for wisdom to rule the people of Israel. He built the temple, the house of God, in Jerusalem upon Mount Moriah as instructed by King David. The Ark of the Covenant was brought into the most holy place inside the temple which became the only acceptable place to offer sacrifices to God according to the law of Moses. To show his approval, God appeared in a cloud to the people at its dedication. When Solomon was old, he forsook the God of his youth and built pagan temples in the high places around Jerusalem. The children of Israel were thus led to worship false gods. When the children of Israel entered Jerusalem three times a year to keep the required feasts, they would be faced with a choice, either worship the one true God at the temple or worship false gods on the high places. Many of the children chose to worship both. Knowing these facts will illuminate the theme of the book of Proverbs. 1 Kings 11 verses 4 to 8 For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom the abomination of the Ammonites. 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. 7. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. 8. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Location of the Book of Proverbs, Jerusalem In the Book of Proverbs, a city is mentioned thirteen times. It is a specific city with gates and streets, and the high places are mentioned four times. By cross-referencing these terms, Jerusalem is shown to be that city. This is the city where King David established a stronghold, and where King Solomon built the temple of God, which influenced the entire world, 1 Kings 10 verse 24. In the law of Moses, God had foretold the people of Israel that he would choose a place to put his name. He chose Jerusalem and made that known to all Israel when he appeared in a cloud at the temple on the day of dedication. God has also made known to the entire world, through his written and preserved word, that Jerusalem is the city of his choosing. Armed with the knowledge of who is speaking in the book of Proverbs, who is being spoken to, the location of the events described, and under what circumstances the book was written, our understanding of Proverbs will be richer and deeper. Complete the following homework assignment. Introduction to Proverbs Homework Concordance Search Find the words and wicked in the books of Proverbs and Job. See if you can find the source of that ancient proverb, Wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, that was quoted by King David in 1 Samuel 24 verse 13. Read, study 1 Chronicles chapters 28 to 29 to understand King David's preparations for building the temple. This temple built by Solomon, 
permanently replaced the tabernacle, which was the former place of worship for the nation of Israel after God, delivered them from bondage in Egypt. God gave Israel the law through Moses, which included detailed instruction of worship in a specific location that was chosen by him. Read, study Genesis 32 verses 24 to 32 for the first use of ye children of Israel, which occurs when God changed Jacob's name to Israel. You may also do a concordance search for the phrase ye children to compare verses. The promises of God to his people read and study the following verses. A great nation promised to Abraham, Genesis 12 verse 2, 18 colon 18. A great nation promised to Jacob, Genesis 46 colon 2 dash 3. A land promised to Abraham, Genesis 12 verse 7, 13 verses 15 to 17. Genesis 15 verse 18, 17 colon 8. A land promised to Isaac, Genesis 26 colon 1 dash 3. A land promised to Jacob, Genesis 28 verses 1 to 4, 10 to 13, 35 colon 10 dash 12. The land flowing with milk and honey, Exodus 3 verse 8, Jeremiah 11 verse 5, Jeremiah 11 verse 5, Ezekiel 20 colon 6. An everlasting kingdom promised to the house of David, Second Samuel 7 verses 12 to 16, Isaiah 9 verse 7, Daniel 2 verse 44. Read, study 1 Kings chapters 1 to 11 and 2 Chronicles chapters 1 to 9 to understand Solomon's accomplishments as king and to learn about his rise and fall. Feasts, three times in the year the men of Israel were required by the law of Moses to travel to Jerusalem to attend the feasts. It is important to understand the things that pertain to Israel in order to rightly divide the word of truth. Consider the following references. Exodus 23,14-17, Deuteronomy 16 verses 16 to 17. Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city where God chose to place his name and to receive sacrifices and worship from the nation of Israel. God foretold that he would choose a location to permanently place his name. See Deuteronomy 12 verses 5 to 21, 14 verses 23 to 24, 16 verses 2 to 11 and 26 colon 2. See also 1 Kings 11 verse 36, 14 verse 21, 2 Kings 21 verses 4 to 7, 23 verse 27, 2 Chronicles 6 verse 6, 33 verses 4 to 7, Ezra 6 verse 12, Psalm 102 verse 21, Jeremiah 3 verse 17, and Revelation 3 verse 12, before God designated Jerusalem as the place of worship, Israel worshipped God at the high place where the tabernacle, the tent built by Moses and the children of Israel, was located. See 1 Kings 3-14 cross-reference 1 Chronicles 16 verses 39-40, 21 verse 29, and 2 Chronicles 1 verses 3 and 13. Read. Study 1 Kings chapter 8 to understand the transfer of the acceptable place of worship from the tabernacle to the temple. In Jerusalem, Zion, the stronghold of Zion, is the city of David. Zion is in Jerusalem. Mount Zion and Jerusalem are used interchangeably in scripture. Zion is also spelled Shaun. See the following references. 2 Samuel 5 colon 7, Isaiah 31 colon 9, Micah 4 verse 8. Concordance search. Find the words Zion and or Shaun together with Jerusalem to discover other references to God's city of choice. Read, consider Matthew 13 verses 10 to 11 to understand that a parable is meant to hide meaning. A parable is not a story to make the meaning understandable for the simple. Notes, feel free to copy the homework pages for use in a group setting.